So we'll do an example of one of those right now. And that example would say, describe a voltaic cell based on these reactions. Our first reaction that we're going to look is silver plus in aqueous solution plus an electron giving us silver solid. If you look in the back of the textbook, we have a value of standard reduction potentials. This is going to tell us how much a particular species would like to be reduced. The higher this number, the more likely that something will be reduced. So in this case, our reduction potential for silver is positive 0 0.80 volts. The other species that we have in this particular reaction is we have copper 2 plus. If we have copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons, it's going to give us copper solid. The reduction potential for this half reaction is going to equal positive 0 0.34 volts. So Back in chapter 4 of the textbook, there was a chart on there called the activity series. And it listed elements in a particular, or it listed half reactions in a particular order, and it had a little arrow that says, like, ease of oxidation increases. Now we're going to take that chart one step further, and if you have the cell potentials for all the half reactions, you can arrange everything in a particular order. So here, our reduction potential for silver is a lot more than it is for copper, a little over twice as much. So this means that comparing these values, that the silver half reaction is most likely to be reduced. So that means that the reduction has to occur in this silver half reaction. So one of the first things, if we're going to describe a voltaic cell, there's an oxidation half reaction and there's a reduction half reaction. If I give you the cell potentials, you can identify what's going to be oxidized and what's being reduced. There's also um, another term that they use. And when you put these cells together, you need two electrodes. The electrodes that we're going to use are going to be an anode and a cathode. Okay? Anode is where oxidation occurs. The cathode is where the reduction occurs. So when you're given two particular half reactions like this, the first thing you have to do is identify which one has the highest positive value. So in this case, the silver half reaction has the highest positive value. That means this is going to be the cathode or the reduction half cell. That means that our copper reaction is going to occur at the anode or where oxidation occurs. One of the little devices that I use to try to remember this, anode and oxidation both start with vowels. Reduction and cathode both start with consonants. So you got to put those two together. So the way we can describe these or draw these out is we have little sketches. When we sketch all of these out, we always put the anode half reaction on the left and the cathode half reaction over on the right. And we typically draw these things where we have two beakers that look something like this. And we can put strips of metal and immerse them in a particular solution. So we have two electrodes like this. We are going to connect a wire. And if you were going to perform this in the lab, you would use little alligator clips 
and then connect them to a voltmeter. And then we're also going to immerse these guys into a solution. If we connect these with a wire, with a conducting wire, we're going to be able to observe the electron flow. So the anode half reaction is going to be the copper. So we take copper 2 plus. Under standard conditions, we'll have a one molar solution of that. And our anode material is going to be a solid strip of copper. The cathode material is going to be a solid strip of silver. And we're going to immerse silver solution around that silver cathode. If we connect these together, we also have to close the circuit and allow electrons to flow. In order to facilitate that flow is something called a salt bridge. The salt bridge has positive and negative species in it. Typically, I think they use potassium nitrate in most cases. And this is going to facilitate the electron flow. Because we need the electrons to flow around in this particular process. The electrons always flow from anode to cathode. So when we write this up and draw this little diagram, if we write the anode on the left and the cathode on the right, the electrons are always going to flow from the anode to the cathode. So we can observe that particular process. If we hook these guys up and look at the experimental voltage, we're going to get a cell potential of positive 0.46 volts. <laughs>